Okay, we should be on uh, chapter 5, page 6 of our notes. And uh, in this one, we're going to go through a nested if-else example and see how that's used. And so that's what we're going to go through right here. The purpose of this program that, we're going, that you should have notes to at this time is to determine the user's prize based on picking a number and a color. So the, the user is going to be asked to enter a color either red or blue, and a number, one or two, to determine her prize. The number and color then are the variables that are used to, to store the user's response. However, before we get to this example, we want to back up and show um, where we have been so far. So if we look at this example here, this is what we've been doing so far. This is a similar situation. The person's prize is depending upon um, them picking on, on what color they pick. So let's say that they pick the color red. And so what will happen, of course, as we already know, is it will go, we'll go to this, the if statement and see the color is red. That's the value of this value, the, of this variable, is color is red equal to blue, in which that's false, so it ignores this example. And then we go then to here, and else if does red equal to red, in which it is. And therefore, the compiler will run and execute the else if clause, and it'll print you win puppies. And this will be avo um, ignored because it only does one of the alternatives. And of course, um, if we were to instead type a, um, pick a blue, then what's going to happen is that blue equals blue, so it'll execute this, the if clause, and ignore these. Okay, so this is what we already know. Now, the key thing here is only one thing determines the person's prize, and that is the color that they pick. Only one thing determines what is only one condition. However, in the problem, in that we're, the one that we're going to go through, there is going to be two things that determine the prize. All right, so it's going to be the color and the number are going to determine the prize. And so to accommodate two conditions, that means that the, the um, compiler will have two conditions to determine that are true in order to come up with the prize. And so if we were then to look at this, so let's see if we can move this over. All right. Just like here, if let's say we picked blue, the if clause would be executed and these two would be ignored. The same thing's going to happen here. So in here, we'll kind of scoot this down a little bit. The same thing's going to happen here. And so what will happen is if this is true, the if statement, it will execute this if clause and it will ignore the if and the else clauses, else if clause and the else clause. But what if the if clause is actually another if else structure? And the else if clause is another structure, if else structure. So what's going to happen here is if the color is blue, if, the, if they pick blue, it's still going to execute the if um, clause, which starts in the, at this brace and ends at this brace. This whole thing is going to be executed and will still ignore this and ignore the else. 
So here's what happens. Uh, and this, of course, is happening because we have two conditions that determine the prize, not just one. That's the critical issue here, is that a nested if is used when multiple conditions must be true. Let's say that again. A nested if is when multiple conditions must be true in order to reach the conclusion. And so in this case, let's um, say then that we pick a blue. Let's say that the, the user picks a blue and they pick the number 2. All right, and so what will happen is we will go here, blue is equal to blue, which is true. So we're going to jump into the if clause. Remember, the if clause starts here and ends here. The if clause happens to be an if-else structure. And so the critical issue here is, now see, blue doesn't determine the prize, because all we know is that they're going to win kittens, because see, they're kittens, kittens. And, but the, the question is now, how many? So we have another condition. We have to determine how many kittens they're going to get. And so, here's the secret to all this. The secret to all this is to treat this if clause, which happens to be an if-else structure, we need to treat that like it's the only thing on the page. So, in other words, you don't see anything else but this if-else structure which I'm having a hard time getting to, to show. All right, so there we are. So in other words, don't worry about anything else. Just wor worry about this if-else structure as if um, it had, it, you know, it was the only thing on the program. And so in here, then what you'll see then is that if they chose the number 2, now if num number equals 1, but the number is 2, so this is false. So we are going to ignore this. Go to else if. 2 is equal to 2. So we are going to execute this program, or this else if clause, and ignore the else, just like we've been doing all along. So it's going to print, you win 20 kittens. So you see how it took two conditions to be true. Two Boolean expressions needed to be, in true, be true until we could reach that conclusion of how many kittens that they win. And so let's say that, the, um, that they type a red. And what we'll do here is we'll, we'll kind of back off here again. So let's say that instead they chose red and 1. And so what will happen is, we'll go here, um, does red equal, does red equal blue? No. So we cross off the entire if clause. Now I was supposed to go down here so we could see this whole thing. All right. So, oh, I forgot to take the if clause off or the else clause. And so, this would be crossed off. And so we would go here to the else if and go, OK, red is equal to red. So that's true. So now we are going to jump in to the else if clause, which just happens to be between those two braces and is an else if clause or structure. And so they pick the 1, so we go to the if statement first, and 1 does equal 1, so we're going to execute this line, and we're going to ignore the rest. And so they win 10 puppies. All right, let's say that they go red and 3. So let's say instead of 
one here, they pick a three. And so what we'll do is we'll go is um, red equal to blue? No, it's false. So we ignore the if clause. We go into else if. Does r red equal red? Well, yes, it does. So we are going to do that one, and we're going to ignore the else. And so now it goes in here and does number equals one. So we're calling this one three. Three does not equal one, so we're going to ignore this. And then does 3 equal 2? No, nope, we're going to ignore this. But it leaves us with the else. And this is how we're going to then treat an invalid entry. So system.out.println, invalid entry type of 1 or 2. OK, we're going to finish with this one. Um, let's say that they, they type a capital B for in, in blue, and then they choose 2. And so here's what happens is um, blue here does not equal blue because th this is capitalized and this is not. And so it will ignore this part, go to here, and of course blue here doesn't equal red, so it skips this part, and then so it's going to handle else. And so this will say system.out.println. In valid entry, choice must be blue or red. And notice the capital. This is not capitalized. Now, if we used ignore case equals ignore case, then of course it wouldn't matter. But this is um, a way that we in, uh, determine invalid entries. So that's how nested if works. And now you should be able to do the rest of the assignment.